Well, hi, welcome to my latest video. Well, in this one, I'm going to do something that's a little bit different from what I normally do. It's sort of in the electronics range of things, at least videos that fall into that category on my channel. And it's also a follow-up to the recent product video I did on this Fluke multimeter that I bought. Now, I bought this particular one for its accuracy on a limited number of functions. I have another one that I've been using for years that's from a company called Peak Meter. Looks very similar, does it? So obviously they were trying to capitalize on the coloring scheme. It can do a lot more. However, it just doesn't have the accuracy on the key functions that the Fluke happens to have on this model that I bought. It costs less than half. I think maybe only one third the cost of what that Fluke meter cost me originally. And it's, it's functional, it works fine. It, uh, it does a lot of different things, but none of them to the same accuracy. Again, repeating that. However, when it comes to measuring current, that's a special thing that I actually left out of the video on this fluke meter because it is tricky. You actually have to connect the meter in series with the circuit. What that means is all the current will flow through the meter. Now it has three scales. Both of them have the same scales. One is the amp scale. That's the full measurement of that particular electronic category. It also has a milliamp scale, which is one thousandth of an amp, and then it has the microamp scale, which is one millionth of an amp. The same thing occurs on this meter as well. It has the same three scales. But again, the current is flowing through the meter, which means that if you are not careful, you can actually cause some danger in addition to damaging the meter. Now, the meter has protection built into it. It has fuses, and I'll show you both of these. I have spare fuses for them. They are different. We'll talk about the differences when I show you those in a little minute. If you put excessive current through a meter that doesn't have that sort of protection, the actual probes, the wiring of the probes can overheat and actually, I hate to say it, in an extreme case, they could melt, let alone destroying the meter. Probably the meter will die before the probes melt, but you never know. So that's why you got to be very careful about this when you're measuring current. And in order to do that for demonstration purposes, which is why I left it out of the video on the fluke, is because I have to set up a circuit to do that. Now I have over here my digital design lab that if you've been watching my channel in the past, you've probably seen a video or two where I've used that before, including when I destroyed a device by accidentally putting too much voltage into it. But I have to set this circuit up and I'll show it here. I'll show a schematic diagram on the screen and I'll describe the components and then we'll show how I build a circuit on the breadboard that's part of that device. We'll fire it up and we'll measure the current with both of these meters and we'll see what they compare against. So stick around to the end and you'll see the results of that comparison. So here's the circuit that we're going to be using along with the calculations to try to tell us what the actual current is going to be that we'll measure. The left hand side of the dotted line is the actual schematic diagram. There are three components there. It shows the five volt DC source. Then over to the right, which is connected to from the plus side, is the 2K, which is 2000 ohm resistor. Now I have resistors that are within 3%, so they should be pretty close. And then down at the bottom, which completes the circuit between the resistor and the power source, is the ammeter. The ammeter can be assumed to be a straight wire. So the straight wire should just cause the actual current that will flow between the power source and the resistor. Over on the right hand side of the dashed line, we see the actual calculation. At the very top of that, it shows the basic Ohm's law formula, E equals I times R, which means E, which is voltage, equals I, which is current, times the resistance, R. If you convert that using simple algebra, you can define that as the current is now equal to the voltage E divided by the resistance R. Fill in the numbers, 5 volts divided by 2000 ohms should give us 0.0025 amps, which is the equivalent of 2.5 milliamps. So we should see that on the meter when we try to test this out. So let's see what we get. So here is my digital design device that I built a few years back, originally to study for my PE license, but it's gone beyond that. I use it in several YouTube channels so far. I will start with this one resistor, which is, if you decoded that out, the, uh, the actual color coding, it is 2000 ohms. And it's a, it's a 3% resistor as well. I have some jumpers that are meant for the breadboarding. Now I have multiple bed breadboards here. These switches over here turn on the different power supplies. You may not easily see it from the screen here. Let me bend this up a little bit and maybe you'll see it. But as I turn on each one of these voltages, you will see the voltage come up on the screen here. So we have here three and a half and then five, or I could turn on the 12 volts over at this end here. 
So I'm not going to use 12 volts. I'm going to use this one, which is the turns on both the three and a half and the five volts, which shows on a little LCD display here as 5.04. Before I turn it on, let me build a circuit. These pads here are connected directly to the power supply. So this one here is red. It's connected to the five volts. This green one is the 12 volts. This black one is ground. So what I'll do is I'll start building the circuit on here. I'll use these jumpers. I'll use a long black one to connect the ground up to a pad strip. The way this works on each individual one of these, across the top is the power strips. The very top is negative, the one right below that, and it goes all the way across. So I'll go ahead and put the ground across the very top. Then I have the red, which I will put to the five volts, which will go to the one right below that. That means that the strip right below that from left to right will now be five volt. I will then carry that down into this section here. So I'll take ground and I'll put it over here. I'll pick a pad over here. Now the way these work is these are vertical. So now that little group of five little pins in one vertical strip are all connected to the same thing. I'll do the same thing with the five volts. I'll bring the five volts down to this pad here. So it's going to be in the pad right going along here. The resistor, I will connect it between the five volts to match the schematic between the five volts. If so it's connected to the same vertical and then I'll connect it to the middle here. I'll pick a middle pad. Doesn't matter which one I pick. They'll all be the same. The wire is very small, so it's hard to get in there. There we go. All I need to do is get to the edges of it anyway. They're not really going to use the pins. I'm going to have the ammeter set up over here. Turn it on to just voltage for now and I could turn the light on, you should be able to see that in the screen. I could move it up a little bit maybe and you could see a little bit better. Let's see. Now it looks like that's about it right there. I already have special probes connected to my meter, which allow it to have little clip wires to it. So these little clippers allow me to just clip to any piece of wire that I want. Okay. I have both for the positive and the negative. And what I'll do is I'll connect the negative over to here, to the ground. And I will turn this to milliamps because that's what I'm expecting to see. I also have to plug in the right place for milliamps. Milliamps is, is this one right here. This one here is full amps. So that's milliamps and microamps and then full amps. This would be if I'm using this voltmeter. So I'll plug this over here to the end of the resistor. Doesn't show anything, but guess why? I don't have any power applied to it. So if I come over here and I turn on the power, let's see what happens. It's a series circuit. I'll turn on the five volts and three volts by throwing this switch. And there we go. 2.43 milliamps DC. If I switched it to microamps, it would be 2,336 microamps. That's a thousand times more. But I'm back to milliamps is the way I want to do it for accuracy perspective. And that, that shows this particular meter and how it works. Let me turn this off and try the other meter. So here's the other meter. I have to turn this one on to milliamps. I'll go all the way over to milliamps over here. Turn the light on the screen so we can see it, and then I'll turn the power on and see what happens now. Now this one says 2.52 milliamps. So as you can see, there is a difference. This one, I'm not sure how it's been calibrated, but it, this, this particular meter is about 12 years old at this point. I did put new batteries in it, but you never know. So anyway, that's how you use a multimeter to measure current in a circuit. It has to be in series with it for it to be working properly. Make sure you pick the right connectors too on the meter. Okay, here are the two meters side by side and I'm going to show you what the fuses look like. A pair of fuses for this fluke are like this. One is uh, 11 amps. It looks like 11 amps and the other one is 44 over 100 amps, which is 440 milliamps. So that's the fuses for the fluke. The ones for this Peak meter are a little bit different. They're smaller. They look like standard 3AGs. And let's see, one of them is 10 amps and the other one is 0.5 amps. So it's a 10 amp and a half amp. Again, to cover the particulars of the two scales. So I'm going to take this one apart and I'm going to show you where these fuses go and uh, we'll move on from there. So the first thing we need to do is take the batteries out. So I'll open this one up and this one has that thing that I'm able to open my thumb, I believe, right? There we go. So I'm going to take the two batteries out and put them on the side here. And it sort of has a plastic cover around the outer edge that I have to pull off. So 
it presses off like this. Here it is without the cover now. And then I have quite a few screws I'll have to take out. There's two screws inside the battery compartment. And then there's four more screws on each of the four corners. And then this whole thing pops right off. A cable is, there might be a wire. So if you look very carefully at here, we see an 11 amp fuse right over here. So the 11 amp one would go there. And then we have, it's hard to read it, but I believe that's the, uh, the other 440. And that's this one right here. And that would go there. So a pair of fuses like this cost about $6. You can buy them cheaper if you bought them in quantity. I only wanted one extra set for now. So then we just have to put it back together and we're ready to go. Oh, before I forget, one of my viewers on the previous video had asked if there was a calibration certificate. Well, I didn't see one come in the box, but there is a little thing in here, orange, that says a calibration seal. I accidentally punched it with the screwdriver because I thought that was where a screw was hiding, but uh, that does say calibration seal on it. And now let's make sure it still works. I'll turn it on, do whatever, and I'll make sure that the light lights up. Looks good. Yeah. So I think we're done.